Chris mm-hmm. Sanders is a Disney legend who yep. was, guess what, folks? Run out of the company. That's First four it. months on Peacock and then 10 months on Netflix. And I think when this movie hits Netflix, it is going to be a smash. And is the biggest threat in the history of Disney's most valuable asset. want to talk about this the wild robot this is a dreamworks production you want to talk about anti woke anti dei from everything that i've heard from i mean this is just a regular good old fashioned fun family entertainment film this did 35 million dollars in its opening weekend and and look who it's and when i say it's not dei and it's not woke i want everybody to look carefully at the top of that placard the top of that movie poster and look at the name uh lupita that that's that's the same lady i believe that was involved in if not mistaken uh isn't that black panther uh, or or wakanda forever uh actress yes it is so my point is we have a movie here that american audiences uh, so far, those that have seen them, the, the, the family audiences out there, dads and moms with kids, um, are really taking to this film a lot. This is by DreamWorks, which, of course, is a Steven Spielberg-owned studio. It's distributed through Universal. Uh, this is another one of these films that probably doesn't have a radical budget like a Pixar or a Walt Disney Animation Studio uh, fair. And, of course, Universal already has this film well sold, uh, cash in hand, to Netflix. So what they spent on this movie, which I I think I've heard the figure, if I'm thinking correctly. I don't know if it's listed on here. I think it came in very reasonably, uh, somewhere around maybe $75 million. Unless I'm mistaken, I'm thinking of something else. That's the number I had heard, yeah, 75 to 8. $75 million. That's probably already cash in hand as a licensing check from Netflix or close to it. So again, this is a film that was built for family audiences, flew way under the radar. It's not something that is connected to a very large or lucrative IP like a Marvel or a Star Wars or or a Pixar toy story or something like this. It's just a very simple film. Uh, I have a feeling this movie is going to build a pretty good amount of momentum and it doesn't have a high hurdle to cross but this is what happens let me show y'all this is what happens i'll take this down for a minute when you uh this is what happens when you make a movie for your intended audiences and i can't stress this enough um winning is winning is winning and check this out 98 percent, both from critics and audiences verified not just fresh but but rotten tomatoes is referring to this as hot with audiences what do you think well i uh i would love to review this and put it on the channel i'm debating whether or not to do so I may put mm-hmm. out a uh, poll for my my audience to decide whether or not i'm going to do that but uh there's a there's a big story here and that is that this is classic disney you just don't realize it and I'm talking about uh, the audience out there, not you, of course. You do know this, Valiant. You know where I'm going right. with it. No, I do. Um, Go ahead. Chris Chris Sanders is the guy behind this. Chris mm-hmm. Sanders is a Disney legend who yep. was, guess what, folks? Run out of the company, just yeah. like so many others. Like John Lasseter and so many others. Exactly, pro. Exactly. And, and look Spot at the magic on. he can do, Valiant. Look at the magic. This is magical. Everyone yeah. loves this. You know what this is? This is... Lilo and Stitch, 20 years later. This is another hit on that level. Chris Sanders, of course, brought his vision to life uh, with all the watercolor backgrounds and everything for Lilo and Stitch. He's he's done it again. Uh, mm-hmm. He's a genius, and Disney doesn't have geniuses anymore. They're over here at these other studios working. No, Disney, uh, Disney employees and Ubisoft employees in 2024 have a hell of a lot in common. Uh, they're soulless. Uh, they have no creativity. 
Uh, they have uh, comparably little talent and, and, and merit to have been put in the positions that they hold now. And we see the results made self-evident in the products that are released. And no matter what amount of, of multi uh, hundred millions of dollars of marketing collectively uh, that go out there, you, you cannot convince normal, intelligent audiences out there to lick a turd. Um, they're, they're tired of licking turds. What if it's rainbow colored? It might be. Um, Maybe but, they've but had here... one too many slushy flavors. <laughs> yeah. I, I talked to Jonas, and, and, and he spoke very highly of this film. Like I said, uh, our buddy Dred Roberts from YouTube, uh, a, a game journalist on YouTube, uh, Dred wanted to be here tonight. He couldn't make it because his kids, his kids were on him about taking them to go see this film. Pro. This is something that's building. And this is what I love is that you don't have to have a big open. You just have to have a big finish. And that finish is obviously going to be financially gauged by what the initial investment was in. And when you're universal and you're run by, in my opinion, far more intelligent, smarter people than those that run places like the Walt Disney Company. You get big hits like this. You get big wins. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I have not seen it. I know very little about this film, but I know enough based on what I'm seeing here as an analyst to look at this, read the tea leaves, incorporate some admittedly anecdotal evidence uh, with, with, with people that are they're telling me about their kids and, and how good this was and the kids wanted to see it, that Universal might have something really special here, and it's another feather in their cap, and it's a feather pro that you just correctly pointed out that was basically, I don't want to say stolen, because it really wasn't stolen, but it was, it was one from the Walt Disney Company. The guy that made this film, because he was, like so many, uh, just completely run down and so uh, uh, disenchanted with where the Walt Disney Company was going that he decided apparently it was time to go because I can take my talent that's no longer appreciated by Bob Iger, my talent that's no longer appreciated at the Walt Disney Company. I'm tired of fighting a bunch of millennials and Gen Zers that don't know what the hell they're doing, but this guy decided, peace out, I'm done. I can go somewhere else that's actually going to appreciate me and compensate me for my talent and what I can bring to the table. Disney is not that company anymore. They don't care about talent. They don't care about merit. They're not going to be able to produce much uh, in, in, in that like they used to do. I realize that Inside Out 2 was a huge success, undeniable, but it took Disney probably close to a half a dozen massive financial failures over the last three or four years to get right, to right. that and, point. And one, to where one exception does not stop the pattern. It doesn't. Need to, they've, got, they've got to continue the success of Inside Out 2, which they've got a shot at it with Moana 2. But then after that, they've got to continue this rather yeah. than digress. And I'll say this too, Valiant, because mm -hmm. this actually gets worse for Disney. The Wild Robot will do definitely well and it's going to have a clear runway all the way until thanksgiving and then it's going to be a streaming darling yeah that i think said, so too first four said, months on peacock and then 10 months on netflix and i think when this movie hits netflix it is going to be a smash that said this is not the first time that disney has been sucker punched by losing the man behind this at the helm chris sanders who by the way just happens to be the wrong color. He's an elder white statesman from Disney. Yeah, loves Disney, by the way. But here, here's the deal. Let me just tell you how bad this is. The guy makes Lilo and Stitch, which was a phenomenal hit for Disney. Although there were some who did not appreciate it, but it was a it was a commercial, gigantic success. Uh, it served many tuna fish sandwiches to many fish of the sea. You'll get the joke <laughs> if you've watched Lilo and Stitch. Now, however, they run him off. He's not acceptable at Disney. 
He gets kicked out of the house of mouse. What does he do next? Well, he went and did the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy. Yep. And, and folks, what's coming to Florida now? I think that's a How to Train Your Dragon totally immersive world, if I'm not mistaken, at Epic, which is opening in about eight months. And is the biggest threat in the history of Disney's most valuable asset, Walt Disney World Resort. Could absolutely uh, flip upside down, invert the market share of Disney in Central Florida. And all of this, seemingly, because they decided to kick this guy out. Wild Robot is just the latest of punches that Disney has taken by letting their geniuses go. Uh, incredibly so. And it's it just it doesn't ever seem to end. And and again, like we did with Inside Out 2, we mentioned a minute ago, credit where credit is due. But like you said, Pro, correctly, that doesn't mean that everything gets fixed tomorrow. Disney has done a lot of brand damage to itself uh, with its own stupidity, its own hubris, its arrogance, and its, quite frankly, hatred, hatred of its own audience. Um, and, and, and they're going to have to dig themselves out of a hole while other studios are probably going to find far more lucrative returns on investment like this film, like the wild robot uh, over time, and Disney is going to be playing catch up. Well, the good news is Disney's got a couple of aces up their sleeve, Valiant. Don't forget, we've got Snow White, the live action remake, as oh, well yeah. as Thunderbolts coming and out don't in March Ironheart. and May. Of Can't 25. wait for Ironheart. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.